Now in this subsection, we're going to look at two variants of the Poisson process. The first one is the summed Poisson process, which is when we take two Poisson processes and add them together. And it will turn out that that is also a Poisson process. And the second version is a marked Poisson process, which is like the undoing of the previous thing, which is when you take one Poisson process and you split it apart into two bits and you get two independent Poisson processes. So we're going to look at those two variants now. So let's start with summing Poisson processes. So here we've got theorem 13.1, which tells us everything we need to know about this. It says, if xt and yt are independent Poisson processes with rate lambda plus mu, then zt, the Poisson process you get from adding together x and y, is, Poisson is a Poisson process with rate lambda plus mu. So if you add together two independent Poisson processes, you get a Poisson process whose rate is the sum of the rates. So here's an example to show how this works. A student receives email to her university email address uh, at rate lambda equals four emails per hour, and to her personal email address at rate mu equals two per hour. Using a Poisson process model, what's the probability the student receives three or fewer emails in total in a 30 minute period? So I think it's clear here that we want to look at the total number of emails received. So the total number of emails received follows a Poisson process. The Poisson process with a rate, the sum of those two rates, the sum of the rate of her university emails and her personal emails, which is 4 plus 2 equals 6. So in other words, the total email process is a Poisson process with rate 6. OK, well now we can do the question. It says, what's the property the student receives three or fewer emails, fewer emails in a 30-minute period? So number of emails in 30 minutes. Well, 30 minutes is half an hour, isn't it? So the number of emails in that amount of time will be Poisson with rate a half times six. Six, because that's the rate of the Poisson process uh, giving the total number of emails, but half, because we're looking at a time period of half an hour, and those were the rates per hour. So we need to halve it, because that's property uh, two that we had back before in the definition of the Poisson distribution. And that's Poisson three, of course. So the thing in question, what's the probability the student receives three or fewer emails? It's the probability that a Poisson 3 is less than or equal to 3. Uh, no easy way to do this one, I'm afraid. We just have to add up the probability that the Poisson 3 is 0, plus the probability it's 1, plus the probability it's 2, plus the probability that the Poisson 3 is equal to 3. So that's, uh, the rate lambda is 3 here, so that's e to the minus 3, 3 to the naught over naught factorial, plus e to the minus 3, 3 to the 1 over 1 factorial, plus e to the minus 3, 3 to the 2 over 2 factorial, plus e to the minus 3, 3 to the 3 over 3 factorial. Um, if you count all these up, that's e to the minus 3, uh, 1, plus 3. 3 squared is 9, divided by 2 is 9 over 2. 3 cubed is uh, 27, take out one of the 3's is 3, take out the other one. Oh, that's 9 over 2 as well. So that comes out as 9 over 2 plus 9 over 2 is 9, plus 3 is 12, plus 1 is 13. That comes out as 13 e to the minus 3, uh, which I calculated before we got here. And it was 0.647, or about 65%. Note that it's only the first two lines here, which are new Poisson process stuff, uh, talking about the sum of the two rates just here, and then remembering our rule for Poisson processes, the number of arrivals in half an hour is half of the rate, 
And then the calculations we did down here are uh, the stuff that you'd have done last year about the Poisson distribution in like Math 1710 or whatever. So it's only actually the first two steps that are new things here. Okay, and we said the opposite of adding two Poisson processes together into one was to split one Poisson process into two. And that's given by this theorem here. So let xt be a Poisson process with rate lambda and independently mark each arrival with probability p. So there might be some reason to think of some of the arrivals as different to others. And so we can mark certain ones that arrive. Then the marked processes, that is the arrival of the marked objects, is a Poisson process with rate p lambda. And the unmarked arrivals, that is the ones that we didn't mark as they came in, are a Poisson process with rate 1 minus p lambda. And those two Poisson processes are, dis are independent. So that's kind of wordy. And there's this kind of weird thing called marking. But I think it will be much clearer if we use an example. So let's go here. In the 2019-20 English Premier League football season, an average of 2.72 goals were scored per game. i would just been uh, updating these statistics. Went down a little bit since the year before. And a proportion, 0.56 of them, were scored by the home team. That's the same as the previous year. If we model this as a process, what's the probability the match ends as a 1-1 draw? Okay, so we're choosing to model this as a Poisson process. So total goals is following a Poisson process with rate 2.72 per game. But when a goal happens, we can think of labelling it by whether it's a home team goal or an away team goal. That is, we're marking it. Uh, probability p equals 0.56 of them were scored by the home team. So we can think that we mark each goal as being from the home team with probability 0.56. That means the home goals, they'll be the ones that are marked, will be a Poisson process with the rate 0.56 times 2.72. And the away goals will be the other one. That will be a Poisson process with rate 1 minus 0 0.56 times 2.72. And further, those are independent. All right, that's P lambda, 1 minus P lambda, independent. And up here we had previously P lambda, 1 minus P lambda, and independent. So that's the, again, that's the new Poisson process bit over, but now we do still want to do uh, the actual calculation. Uh, so uh, 0.256 times uh, 2.72, uh, I calculated this earlier, that's uh, Poisson 1.52, rate of 1.52 home goals per game, and a rate of 1.20 away goals per game. So the probability it's a 1-1 one, one draw is the probability that the Poisson 1.52, the marked home goals, equals 1. And the uh, Poisson 1.20 unmarked away goals is also equal 1. But because we're told by the theorem that these are independent, then to get the probability of them both, we just multiply them. So that's the probability of the Poisson 1.52 equals 1 times the probability that the Poisson 1.20 equals 1. So that's uh, 1.52 uh, e to the minus 1.52. might just want to take a moment to check that that matches up with what you know about the Poisson process. Similarly, this is 1.20 e to the minus 1.20. And then uh, you just need to type all that into your calculator. It comes out as 0 0.12. So if you believe that football goals do follow a Poisson process, then you should see that about 12% uh, of games uh, come out as a one-all draw.